Welcome to Get the Right Job. I'm Jeff Magnuson. In today's episode, I want to cover two topics together, fear-mongering and myth-busting. There are a lot of pieces of information out there that either are not true, they're outdated, they're misinterpreted by people, or they're deliberately being amplified by people for their own benefit. And they're not talked about very much because they're being used inappropriately. And I want to make sure that some of these terms and some of these ideas people are still talking about now in 2021 are understood by you. So you have the context and you understand what is reality and what people are still holding on to, oftentimes for their own benefit. The first one is the idea of the corporate ladder. Now, your parents, their parents have probably used this term years and years ago, 30, 40, 50 years ago, when it was more accurate. And what it means essentially is most people used to work at one company for their entire careers, and they would slowly get more responsibilities and more pay as they went up the ladder, got better job titles, etc. That structure is essentially gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Yes, of course, there are still some people who stay at companies for long periods of time. You know some of them. I know some of them. But most of the people you know do not. So th- this idea that you, that you come in and you work your way up a ladder, it's also used now by companies to hold people back and to maybe not give them the proper job titles that they have or should have kind of dangle the carrot to climb the ladder so you can eventually get there with more hard work and more time. In today's job market and for the foreseeable future, you have to build and manage your own career. If you're at a company for, let's say, one, two, three years, and they're no longer recognizing you with the proper salary level or the right job title, then you have every right to look elsewhere and find a company that will pay you fairly or that will recognize you with the job title that you should have based on the industry that you're in. There are still many companies, HR, managers, and so on, who completely forget this fact and rely on the fear-mongering label of calling somebody a job hopper. And then, of course, if they're using that term in a negative, then a lot of the recruiters, the third-party recruiters, the internal recruiters, the headhunters, and so on, will amplify that and say, oh, you don't want to come across as a job hopper if you're only staying in companies for two or three years. It doesn't matter what they think. It doesn't matter what label they put on you. You have every right to switch a job to go somewhere better if you are not getting recognized properly. And more and more people are warming up to that fact because it's simply how the market works now. If companies recognize people and keep them engaged and keep them challenged and pay them fairly and so on, then people will not be as inclined to leave. It's a two-way street always. So the corporate ladder, the term in terms of the old-fashioned way is all but extinct But the idea of you managing your career, but doing it across multiple companies is not only the way things are, is 100% acceptable. And this brings me to the idea of loyalty, company employee loyalty, and the fact that it's a giant myth. It doesn't exist anymore. Much like people stayed with companies 40 years ago, 50 years ago, like I said before, That doesn't happen anymore, even before this pandemic. But what this pandemic did in 2020, it really pulled back the curtain and exposed this myth in a big, big way. Chances are you know somebody who was impacted professionally by the pandemic. Either they were let go or they were furloughed. I spoke to dozens of people. And were these personal attacks by the companies? No, they weren't. The company's revenue was drying up because people weren't going shopping. They weren't going to the 
to restaurants anymore. The revenue dried up, so they couldn't afford the expenses, the employees, so they had to let them go. These are business relationships from your very first day until you no longer work with a company again. They are business relationships. And you have every right to walk away at any point for whatever reason you want. If it's no longer fitting your needs, if you're no longer happy there, if you have to take care of a loved one or a sick relative or raise a family, that's fine. You don't owe a company any type of long-term investment or time unless it's stipulated in a contract simply because they hired you. Yes, you work hard when you're there and you want to be a good employee, but the idea that you owe them anything more than that or a certain amount of time is simply not true. Because at the drop of a hat, they have a bad quarter, they have a bad year, they can let you go. And we just saw that many companies did that. It's been going on for years, but 2020 was pretty bad, so it was really amplified and everybody got to see it firsthand. If you're one of those who are afraid of how it's going to look, if you're going to damage your reputation, all I can say is as long as you leave respectfully and professionally, if you can give notice, if they will accept your notice, how somebody thinks about you when you react professionally and decide to improve your professional situation is not your problem. You can't control what people think about you. All you can control about is how you behave, how you react, and the decisions you make. Walking away from a company for whatever reason is well within your rights to do that. So understand that this idea of company and employee loyalty simply does not exist anymore. And this final piece that I want to mention is you have to be really careful where you get advice from. If, if you're working with a recruiter, for example, you have to understand that recruiters work for the companies, not you. I've talked about that in a previous episode. But something came up on TikTok when I was scrolling through and, or somebody asked a question and somebody said, do I really have to give a company, a new company, 90 days if I know that I hate it after 30 days and realize it was just a giant mistake? And the answer is no. There's no minimum that you have to give a company. I would say give it a couple of weeks at least just to make sure you're not having a knee-jerk reaction and leaving too early because maybe somebody's out or things are just a little scattered at the moment. But if you started a new company and you realize after a few weeks that this is not what I signed up for or this is not what I was told it was going to be or my manager is all of a sudden a different person, you can walk away. Assuming you can walk away, you have the financial means and so on. You don't owe a company anything other than, again, your time, what I talked about. If you want to leave after 40 days, after 15 days, you have every right to do that. The problem with this 90-day rule is that it was given to this person by an external recruiter. And the reason I mention that is because when recruiters place employees at companies, they earn a commission from that company. But they don't earn the commission right away. Do you want to guess how long they have to wait before they get paid? That's right. It could be up to 90 days. So the person giving this new candidate, this new employee, the advice was a headhunter because that person wanted to get paid. And I don't blame the headhunter for wanting to get paid. He or she's just trying to make a living. My point is, when somebody is giving you advice to stay put somewhere, understand, do they ha what's their motivation? Okay, are they aligned with you? Are they on your side? In this case, there was not. There was a misalignment. The headhunter wanted that person to stay and then leave after 90 days. They wouldn't have cared after that because they would have been paid. So just be really careful where you get your advice, who it's coming from, what their incentives are as you move forward. And that's it for this episode. If you have any questions, if, you, if there's a topic that you want me to cover on the podcast, please visit jeffmagnusonconsulting.com and drop me a line. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you at the next episode.